Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the inaugural Pittsburgh Sports Face-Off, a Pittsburgh Sports Live production. I'm your host, Matt Geica. The rules are simple. A sports media pro from the Pittsburgh Sports Now universe will square off against a courageous fan challenger, and they'll both take a crack my diverse lineup of questions. If our fan challenger can beat the pro, he or she will receive a $25 gift card to our friends uh, from our friends at Burgatory and also a free three month subscription to one of our Pittsburgh Sports Now family of sites. We'll start with a series of five questions worth one point each, then five questions worth two point each, and then the final face off question in which the contestants can wager as much of their point total as they wish. So here we go. Our first Pittsburgh Sports Live pro to dip his toe into the water is the manager of Pittsburgh Sports Live and Steelers now and the lead host at Pittsburgh Sports Live too. His name is Mike Osti. Mike, welcome to the show. And I'm very happy that you volunteered yourself as tribute here on behalf of the staff. Yeah, I figured I would uh, put myself on the line here uh, to start things off. But yeah, thanks for having me. I, I actually just did a trivia contest there with uh, our oh. church, and that did not really go well. But that involved a lot of people in trying to, I think our bandwidth for internet is kind of what held us back there. So hopefully this goes better. For me. Okay, yeah, we have fewer people than that, I'm guessing, <laughs> here on, on this show. But the yeah. intensity should be just as much as that. Our first fan challenger in episode one of the Pittsburgh Sports Face Off. He's a realtor for Pyatt Sotheby's International and also the head coach of the Duquesne Division I men's club hockey team. He is Conrad Waite. Conrad, welcome, and thank you for taking a shot at trying to knock off Mike here tonight. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Excited to see how it all comes out, and I um, hope that I win. <laughs> well, you should. Yes. You should. I, I, would, I would think less of you if you didn't hope you would win. You always got to strive for victory, but I, I enjoy that you're representing there. Nice pullover. Yeah, the old English D on full display here on yeah. Conrad's chest. Here's the blank slate for Pittsburgh Sports Faceoff round one, and away we go. First question worth one point, gentlemen. For a team known for defense and toughness, the Steelers have had more than their share of talent at the wide receiver position. But amongst a group loaded with spectacular pass catchers, who is the team's all-time career leader in touchdown receptions? Conrad. Mike. Conrad, you buzzed in first. Heinz Ward. That is correct. Heinz Ward is the answer. Conrad takes a 1-0 lead here. Heinz had 85 touchdown catches in his career in the black and gold. Yeah, so there you go. Here's your updated scoreboard. 1-0. Conrad Waite over Mike Osti in the Pittsburgh Sports Faceoff. On to Pitt basketball, gentlemen. In the first decade of this century, from 2000 through 2009, the Pitt Panthers rose to prominence on the hardwood, making the NCAA Sweet 16 five times. They also reached the Elite Eight once in that time span. But which team denied the Panthers their first Final Four trip back in 2009? Mike. Mike, go ahead. Villanova. That is correct. Villanova is the answer. We have a deadlock one-to-one -one through two rounds of the Pittsburgh Sports Faceoff. I think he, he probably knew that too, but we both had to, had to steal one. Uh, that's about the buzzer there yeah oh hey you're both on the board so there, there you have you it there you go no one's going to get shut out here tonight on to hockey regardless of how the stanley cup playoffs end up happening this summer or if they do it all here's hoping though anyway the penguins still hold the nhl's longest active streak of playoff qualifications the question is how many years in a row have the pens competed in the nhl's postseason Five seconds. Conrad. Conrad, go ahead. Fifteen. That is incorrect. Mike, you want to take a crack at it? Okay. Let's see here. I'm going to say twelve. Oh, you're both just barely off. Thirteen is the answer. Oh man, I knew it was in that neighborhood. And it's going to be 14, okay. but it's 13 right now. Right. So right. either way, okay. you guys were just a shade off, so oh, we remain man. tied. Okay. One to one. Okay, let's go to baseball for question number four. Last July against the Cubs, Josh Bell became the 20th hitter in Pirates history to crack three homers in one game. Andrew McCutcheon was the previous bucko to pull off that feat at San Diego in 2017. How many times, though, did Kutch pick up the home run hat trick, if you will, in a game? Three homers in a game. How many times did Andrew McCutcheon pull that off? Five seconds. Mike. 
Okay. Conrad, you went okay. first. Oh, um, I'm going to go three. Three is the correct answer. Andrew McCutcheon <laughs> did it three times. 2009 as a rookie against the Washington Nationals, and then 2016 at Coors Field against the Rockies in addition to that matchup against the Padres. So we have a two-to-one score. Evidence through four rounds of the faceoff. On to the final of the quote-unquote easy questions here tonight. Civic slash Mellon Arena served the Penguins as their home for 43 years. Maybe a little longer than many with the franchise might have liked, but it was a long run for the Igloo. Which is the only major league sports venue in Pittsburgh history to enjoy a longer active tenure than the Igloo did? Mike. Mike, go ahead. Forbes Field. That is correct. Forbes Field. Care to guess how many seasons it hosted the Pirates? It was under 50, but in the neighborhood of 40, uh, 44, 46, and that like something like that. Actually, it was more than 50, 62 oh, really? seasons. Okay, so, wow. I knew it wasn't Three Rivers. I knew <laughs> that they, they lingered with Forbes Field for a long time, but I didn't, yeah, okay. 1909 through 1970, middle of the 1970 yeah. season was when the Pirates moved over to Three Rivers Stadium. So 61 and a half, technically, but parts of 62 seasons the Bucks were at Forbes Field in Oakland. Okay. Okay, wow. score reset through two through uh pardon me one round here through the one point questions two to two is the score it's pretty good already i love it a very competitive showdown to start it off ready for the two point questions to football most nfl fans know the steelers haven't had much turnover at the head coaching position over the past 50 years they've employed just three men in that seat over that time starting with the hall of famer chuck Knoll and moving on to craft and zone bill cower and currently mike tomlin the question is, though, who came before Chuck Knoll, getting fired just before the 70s began? Um, Five seconds. I don't remember. Yeah, I, I, that's off the top of my time, but beep, I can't beep. think of the name right now. I would just be wasting. But. There's the unofficial buzzer, Bill Austin. And I had to look okay. that one up. That's actually courtesy <laughs> okay. of uh, – that was a, a, a friend of mine, Larry okay. Snyder. He suggested that one. So thanks for the question, okay. Larry. You stumped our, our panel here. We appreciate Larry, though. Larry throws that. out the, the free promotion for the Now Network all over the place. I'm a big fan of Larry. Oh, yeah. He's the press agent of the stars. And, well, Larry got the better of all <laughs> yeah. three of us on this there one. There you go, I yeah. Congratulations. I couldn't have named Bill Austin. He lasted just three years. Steelers drafted Mean Joe Green, and they were off and running in the 70s, as we all know. Okay, back to hockey for another two-point question. The Penguins have won five Stanley Cups in their five-plus decades of existence, ranking them behind only four teams in NHL history. Those are the Canadians, the Maple Leafs, the Red Wings, and the Bruins. But among non-original six teams, though, the Pens are tied for first in Stanley Cups. Which team are they tied with? Mike. Mike, go ahead. Edmonton Oilers. That is correct. Two points for Mike. That puts him up four to two. The Oilers clinched all five of their Stanley Cups from 1984 through 1990. So it was quite the yeah. run there. They haven't they done won. it since. As now we they all won know. one without Gretzky that people forget about, which is why yeah, they have that yeah. record. And if the, if the Penguins would have lost to Detroit, Detroit would have then had five, and they would have been first in both categories, or they would have been tops of both categories. But And as we know, the original six teams do have the head start. Impressive, the Pens are still ahead of the, uh, the Blackhawks, even though they've been around for – forever and ever um and also the rangers too so there you go yeah, pens yeah. and oilers among the non-original six teams are tied for first in cup so mike good stuff there nice pull you're up four to two but of course higher leverage now with the questions being worth double let's do baseball and the pirates after winning their fifth world series in 1979 the pirates missed out on the mlb postseason in 10 consecutive years but they returned triumphantly to october in 1990 after winning the first of three straight National League East Division titles. The question is, though, which eventual world champion team ended Mike. the Bucks' run in the NLCS in 1990? Cincinnati Reds. You got it, Mike. That is correct. Cincinnati Reds moves you to six points. And now it's getting down to it. Just two questions left before we get to the final faceoff. Yeah, Barry Larkin's forgotten ring. He has a ring. People forget he has one. Most people forget that the Pirates and Reds ever played in the 1990s. Well, I also yes. like that the Reds have that. Well, I don't like it, but I find it funny because if you pull back to really embarrass the Pirates in terms of 
all the franchises that have least made a championship series or have won a championship or won a pennant. The Reds, who have basically been the same as the Pirates and have won just about the same amount of time for the last 25 years, have the heads up in the last 30 years because of that championship. The Nasty Boys, they helped yeah. them get it done. Yeah, yeah, Rob Rio. Dibble, yeah. Yeah. Big upset, too, as they defeated the That's Oakland A's. Luke Pinella's were, only ring as a manager since season. he couldn't get one with the Mariners, yeah. All right, so, yeah, Sweet Lou and the Reds got it Should done in 90. Should have been T. Rose. P- I, I love the story the that Pirates. T. Rose apparently was managing in jail. He was literally in prison. I heard <laughs> this from a former Pittsburgh media member that I will tell you guys off air. Oh, okay. You'd like to know. I can't say on air. <laughs> but he told me a story. He used to intern for Pete Rose, and this – World Series was basically being managed by Pete Rose in jail. He was literally watching it with the rest of the prisoners, and apparently Pete told him that he was calling every single move that Lou Pinella did as he did it. At least that's a story from what Pete Rose told this person, but it's and kind of more funny. reputable to believe a story about than Pete Rose. <laughs> true, true, true. But he, he got this guy got to do one to really fault. cool thing that when Ted Williams called Pete Rose to talk to him after the ban – this person got to say, excuse me, I ha- uh, Pete, I, Mr. Williams is on the line for you. <laughs> hey, how cool is that? Uh, that's pretty brilliant. Uh, well, no shortage of stories around Charlie Hustle. We know that for sure. We'll keep it in baseball for round nine. And again, six to two is the score. Mike's taken two in a row here. Three Rivers Stadium hosted its second All-Star game in 1994, as you might recall, giving baseball fans a nice showcase before the strike wiped out the World Series. Which late National League Hall of Famer scored the dramatic winning run in that all-star game on Moises Alou's walk-off double in the 10th inning? Mike. Mike, go ahead. Tony Gwynn. Yes, Tony Gwynn is correct, and that moves you all the way up to eight points. The score is now eight to two, and unfortunately, Tony no longer with us, but remember the slide just passed the the tag of Pudge Rodriguez at home. That was uh, maybe one of the better finishes in All-Star Game history, I'd have to say. <laughs> at, at least that season got one of the better All-Star Games ever <laughs> since. Yeah. As we talked about in, on, on the, one of my last shows that you were on, they didn't get a champion that year. Okay, question 10. This one also worth two. And this one might be more in Conrad's ballpark, so to speak. Nine Duquesne alums have played in Major League Baseball, but only one of those has been active in the past 50 years. Name the former Duke who pitched 14 MLB seasons this century, including two stints with the Pirates. I'm going to give Conrad a crack at this. Go ahead, Conrad. Uh, um, is it Bimel? It is Joe Bimel. That is correct. Go. Okay. And that is a critical uh, get there for Conrad because it does put him within striking distance here. It's now 8-4. to four going into the final face-off. So what we're going to ask of our two competitors here tonight, they've brought their pads and their pens. They're going to write down their wager after I give them the category. And the category for tonight's final face-off is sudden victory. Place your wager and uh, get your pens and pads ready for the question. It'll be, uh, you'll need to list a couple of names here, just so you know, so leave some room there on the sheet. Here's the question. The 2016 Stanley Cup playoffs marked a return to glory for the Penguins and postseason redemption for so many with the franchise. The run to the team's fourth title was aided by four sudden-death overtime wins, including, most notably, Nick Bonino's series clincher versus the top-seeded Caps in the second round at PPG Paints Arena. To get your points, though, you have to name two of the three other OT scorers for the Penguins in 2016. So not Benino, there were three other OT scorers for the Penguins in that cup run. Give me two of them, just two, and that'll get you the, the victory here in the final faceoff. Go ahead. Ten seconds. You're big on the OT winner questions <laughs> from the, the show. It's dramatic, today. yeah. Four, three, Two, one, and time is up. Gentlemen, show us what you have there for, well, we'll start with the, uh, the trailer going into the final face-off. Conrad, what do you have? Uh, I don't think I have it, but I went with uh, Hornquist and Malkin. Oh, you had one of the two. Hornquist did score against the Caps in game four, putting the pens up three to one, but Malkin did not score 
an overtime goal at least in the 2016 Stanley Cup playoffs. All right, so Mike, it's ceremonial at this point, but what do you have? Yeah, I, I didn't know it enough to, to wager too much there, but I went Crosby Kessel. Okay, so Crosby is correct, scored against the yeah. Lightning in game two. I knew Crosby was one, and Kessel, I only went Kessel because I could argue he should have won Conn Smythe. He did have a great playoffs, but I guess not one of those two. Yes, he did not. So Hornquist, Crosby, you guys want to venture a guess at who the third was out of that group? Those are, l- l- Crosby was going to be my next guess, so I don't know. It was in the um, Stanley Cup final against the Sharks, game two. Yeah. Well, People at home are probably. Sorry, what was your guess? Right what did you say, Conrad? Schultz? Who? Sorry. Schultz? No. Oh, was it was it Brian Rust? No, but it was one of those young forwards that were called up. That okay. Year. Yep. Sherry. Connor Sherry. Yeah, we were calling him Sherry at that time. Oh, now Sherry, gotcha. but he was, yeah, was Connor Sherry. <laughs> it was that face-off play that apparently play. Sid drew up. Yeah, right. That uh, back to the tang, bumped it over to <laughs> to Sherry and beat Martin Jones. So, Mike, you risked one, correct? Yeah, I didn't have enough confidence to risk one, so I guess okay. I'm down to what, seven. And you, I you bet three, three so that I wouldn't end up with zero. Okay. <laughs> well, there you have it then. You did stay on the board. Seven well, to Conrad, one is I your figure, final score. I feel like you, had, you should have at least wagered four, or you just were banking on me missing it. I was banking on you <laughs> missing two. I was, okay. I was thinking the thinker. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it wouldn't have worked okay. out, but hey, that's part of the fun, right? That's why you yeah. do the wager thing. Okay, congratulations, Mike. You have defended your turf here on Pittsburgh Sports Live. The lead host, fittingly, you pick up the first victory <laughs> round I one. To. I had goes to. to the I, pros. I, I had the pressure on me, I feel like, and Twitter would have uh, ran amok if uh, – <laughs> as I feel like I'm arrogant enough on Twitter that I couldn't have went down. So I couldn't have struck out here on the opening show. Um, and uh, what I will also say, Conway, I definitely appreciate you – being a part of this we definitely appreciate you being a fan of the sites we definitely you know welcome you to subscribe to pittsburgh sports live as well as be you know a supportive and a fan of any of the sites and uh, i will also say that when all of this is over when the pandemic's over and we're able to get outside and and live our normal lives you have a burger and beer on me sweet i will take you up on that okay Awesome. Well, Conrad, part and parcel of joining the show and putting your butt on the line here on Pittsburgh Sports Faceoff is we give you some time to plug whatever you want to plug at the end of the program, regardless of if you win, lose, or draw. So I have a feeling I know what you're going to talk about, but go ahead and let us know a little bit more about the Duquesne Dukes. Sure. So we're, uh, we're an ACHA D1 club team, uh, which means that we're non-varsity. We're a student organization at our school. But one of the things a lot of people don't know about hockey and college sports is that there's very few NCAA teams there's approximately 140 to 150 NCAA teams across all levels. Um, And for a sport that's growing in the U S the ACHA is one of the primary kind of like outlets for it. So um, yeah, it was like, we compete locally against schools like Pitt, WVU, Ohio university, Mercyhurst, uh, Slippery Rock schools like that. And then nationally we'll, we'll play teams like Alabama, Oklahoma, Illinois, which has been rumored to go division one, um, in the NCAA for the last couple of years and uh, schools like Arizona State and years ago, Penn State, um, before mm-hmm. they started a NCAA D1 team. So um, we're a fully student funded um, and, you know, through fundraisers and alumni support. Um, so if you're a hockey fan, there's a lot of good hockey out there outside of just the RMUs and Chathams, um, which are both, you know, great programs locally. Or if you're a Duquesne alum, you know, it's like you can look me up. I'm pretty easy to find. Um, it was like, we appreciate all support, um, since we're, you know, again, largely student driven. And we can find you at DUQ hockey on Twitter and Facebook. Is that correct? Twitter, Instagram. Yep. You can find DUQ hockey. Um, and then if you just look, Google Conrad wait as a real estate agent, my mm-hmm. contact info is everywhere. So it's pretty easy to find me as well. If you want to find me. Okay, perfect. So there you go, Conrad. Thanks so much for playing. It was a lot of fun on the first Pittsburgh sports face off going head to head with Mike here. And we encourage all of you out there who are interested, if you want to try your hand, it won't always be Mike. Mike will be a frequent no. competitor here, but we, we want to get some of the roster opened up. Yeah. We want to go into the depth at Pittsburgh sports now, but regardless, if you want to challenge one of our uh, sports media pros here on the face off, just let us know. Uh, there'll be a post on the website. Of course, also you leave a comment on the YouTube channel. There are many ways to get at us. I'm at Matt, Matt Geica, M-A-T-T-G-A-J-T-K-A on both Twitter and Facebook. And, you know, Mike, uh, Mike, give us your handle as well so folks can chime in. 
Um, they're at Mike Osti 11. So at Mike Osti 11, A-S-T-I 11. And uh, yeah, we definitely welcome you guys and feel free to, if you want to tell Matt, you want to request a competitor as well. After we get through yeah. the docket, you're welcome to request somebody that you want to compete against. Uh, I will be back. So if you want to compete against me, kind of wait as we go around in a circle and then maybe request me down the line. Conrad, we definitely appreciate you joining us for this i definitely recommend heading down there to the rink there is a lot more hockey in this city which some call a one of the hockey towns to not get into that debate right now <laughs> in the country but it's it's definitely more than just the penguins rmu obviously a great program even penn state and I, i'm actually a wvu alum so i do know all about how there's a lot of forgotten hockey teams out there even in the region that aren't necessarily competing at that nca level but uh the club team, some of them are good, some of them are entertaining, and it's the hockey sport in general, collegiate athletics, a little different. So it's kind of harder to be at that level than, say, the other sports. That's why people think, oh, you're a club team in hockey. You, I don't want to watch you because there's a 160-some collegiate basketball teams, and they're not winning, but they're Division One. They're in the NCAA tournament every decade or so, and that's not the case for your hockey team. Well, it's a totally different ball game to get even to that level those equivalents would not be there if it was off the hockey rules. Exactly. Yep. All right. Well, for Conrad Waite, for Mike Osti, I'm Matt Geica saying good night. Thank you so much. We had a lot of fun on the first edition of the Pittsburgh Sports Faceoff. I'm going to put the stick mic down, take off the tie, and uh, sit back and watch and see how you guys enjoy the show. Again, more shows coming, more faceoffs coming as we continue on into the springtime here on Pittsburgh Sports Live. Stay with us.